Ukrainians, that is for them to speak to. And I will, uh, obviously, we defer to the Ukrainian government to, 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 uh, to speak to this on their own. And then on this issue of um, uh, military biological um, labs in Ukraine that the Russians keep uh, raising, yeah. can you basically explain to us what type of relationship, if any, there was between the Pentagon and the Ukrainian side on any biological labs uh, when was the last cooperation, and what do you have to say about these Russian accusations? The Russian accusations uh, are absurd, they're laughable, and, uh, you know, in the words of my Irish Catholic grandfather, a bunch of malarkey. There's nothing to it. It's classic Rus Russian propaganda, and, uh, and uh, I wouldn't, uh, if I were you, I, I wouldn't give it... Uh, I wouldn't give it a drop of ink worth worth paying attention to. All right, John Kirby, the uh, spokesman at the Pentagon, uh, giving updates, saying now officially the Pentagon does not support this transfer of jets uh, to Ukraine uh, via Poland. Uh, let's bring it now. CNN Pentagon correspondent Barbara Starr and retired Brigadier Army General Mark Kimmett. Uh, Barbara, first to you. Not only uh, did uh, Admiral Kirby say that they don't support this transfer. He said that uh, transferring these MiG-29s, uh, little increased capabilities at high risk. He doesn't think fighter jets are really what the Ukrainians need now anyway. That appears to be the military analysis this afternoon. Uh, one, that Ukraine still has several squadrons of jets available to it. Not clear how much they are able to fly in this contested environment they operate in with the Russians, but they have, they have the air power and that the U.S. doesn't feel that Ukraine is going to get a significant advance in its military capability from getting more aircraft. Uh, Kirby went on to say what the Pentagon's been saying for several days, that they are still talking to allies and other partners about additional air defense systems, because that's really maybe the challenge here, trying to poke a hole in Russia's air defense umbrella, if you will, over Ukraine. Uh, Russia has the ability to basically launch missiles and strike at any point in Ukraine that it chooses to, and that's going to be the problem because they can operate in that space, launching missiles, and the Ukrainians have to be able to challenge them, have to be able to shoot those missiles down. But the political risk was there as well. The real concern by the Pentagon, um, led, a, I think it's fair to say, by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, that this would be a military move, seen as escalatory, potentially by Vladimir Putin. It would draw the U.S. potentially into a direct conflict, which the Biden administration, of course, is trying so hard to stay out of. No U.S. involvement, direct involvement in the war. And the concern, if those jets came out of a U.S. base in uh, Germany, which was the idea, Putin would only see it one way. General, I mean, you just heard from John Kirby, they're, they're basing that on intelligence assessments, their logic right now. What did you hear? Well, uh, the fact that they're going to be more air defense in tells me that they still believe that the Russian air threat uh, is significant. Uh, but I think it's important to understand and ask the question, why aren't the Ukrainians flying their jets? Because they've got such target-rich environments, a 40-mile convoy, ballistic missile sites, uh, artillery sites. What that tells me is that the concern is that the Russians have a pretty robust air defense system inside of Ukraine right now, and they're afraid of those aircraft getting shot down. So when John Kirby says, uh, for little value and higher risk, it may not only be the escalatory risk, but it may be the fact that the Russians may have the S-400 in there, and they could shoot those aircraft down uh, pretty quick. So uh, I think we're missing the story of why the Ukrainian jets aren't flying in the first place. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. We've wondered that as well. Uh, thank you for all that context. Barbara Starr, retired Brigadier Army General Mark Kimmett. Thank